Time to play with some clay. Now today I'm going to do the horns, and I've uh, done a little research on the horn shapes. And if you look at this guy right here, you can see how big his head is compared to these. These are massive antelope horns here. I don't think that the ones that, uh, that would look a little oversized on this headdress. Uh, this gentleman's head is about the same length as the uh, the horns are long. And this guy here, his head length is one and a half. Well, these are one and a half times longer than his head. So that's a little bit big. But it got, does show me the shape of the horns. I'm sorry about the light. It does show me the shape of, of the horns and and how they're constructed and so I'm going to attempt to do that. I'm going to, I was going to sculpt it out of wax but I'm going to try it in clay first and uh, I just made some wire armature out of uh, this uh, twisted wire here. Uh, what I do is I uh, well, I just do it with my drill. I, I I show how I do it in one of my instructional DVDs. I just don't remember which one. But uh, it's it's really tough armature material. Makes a great armature. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to cut a couple of links. And try not to cut my fingers at the same time. Now I got to go store this long piece someplace out of the way. Well, if you can get wire cutters like these, you you can cut any size wire. It's got so much leverage because of the length of the uh, handle that you can cut just about any thickness wire with it. So I gotta get the head measurement. I'm move these uh, pictures out of the way. In fact, a really wide base. It's kind of a flat, hollow type feel to it. You can see it with the shadow right there. Now this clay isn't like wax. It, it will lose its shape if you don't take care. And uh, that's why I'm putting a rather stiff armature inside the clay to keep it from deforming. I don't generally like doing these things before I it usually the last thing I do just to uh, keep it from getting all screwed up during the sculpting process but I think I can be okay. Well, pardon my uh, unsteady camera here. Uh, I got two swing arm lamps that I've mounted above my sculpting stand so I can adjust uh, their height and position. Uh, that gives me good lighting on the subject matter. And then down here, let me get my dark in the picture a little bit and you can see it better. That's where I've got my clay softening up underneath another swing arm lamp. That lamp has a 100 watt bulb in it. 
lighten this up again. And the two swing arm lamps above my clay are 60 watt or 100 watt uh, uh, LEDs. I think that's what they are. The ones that don't heat up. I can't remember which ones those are. But anyway, that's how I light my studio. The sculpting stand I bought from an artist who made it for me almost uh, 40 years ago. You can't get them anymore, but uh, you can get sculpting stands from Sculpture Depot in uh, Loveland, Colorado. SculptureDepot.net. They've got all kinds of real good sculpting stands. All right, that's how I light my studio. This is for a guy who requested this yesterday on comments area of uh, my video. Yeah, it's raining outside today. I'm loving this. Free water. I don't have to pay to get my lawn watered. It's about, uh, eh, it says 50 degrees. That's pretty cool. <coughs> I'll show you my house now. I got cleaned it up the last couple of days. I mean, my entryway is uh, box free. I I couldn't even get to my books for two years because uh, I had so many boxes stacked up here. And I got that shelf right there at the city dump or town dump and uh, this table here at the town dump too. So they take uh, some of the pressure off of uh, placing some of my clays over here is a sailor hat that I wore in the Navy back in the 60s. In fact, uh, 1968, Bob Hope and Phyllis Diller did a movie uh, near the island I was stationed on in uh, Puerto Rico, on Viegas Island. And I got Bob Hope to sign the hat. There it is. There's his signature there. Now, wait a minute. Anyway, Bob Hope signed uh, my hat. He actually borrowed the hat from me to wear during the USO show, and then Phyllis Diller signed it. Uh, a couple years later, uh, I she was doing a uh, show uh, showing of her paintings at the same gallery I was showing at. I was on the North Shore of Lake Tahoe. Uh, she was down on the South Shore. I couldn't leave the show I was doing to go down and see her again, but uh, I there's a big long story about how I met her during that USO show and and I passed on the note and asked her if she would mind signing the hat too and so she did and that's my sailor hat from the 1960s and this is my house this is all lined with boxes right on it here in fact on top of the counter all along the in front of the counter I had boxes for almost two years. I just wasn't motivated to get anything moved. And these are a couple of my uh, uh, resin castings. I tried that, but I'm not really happy with them. They break too easily. And uh, I cleared out all the boxes underneath these tables. I had boxes all along there and in front of the tables for a long period of time. And uh, it's still not... It doesn't look like your normal everyday house, but uh, it works for me. It's a very small uh, converted garage into a house. And then my studio is over there. My bedroom, my messy bedroom is right there. And uh, my studio is in a little four by eight foot area here in the back corner of the uh, front room. All right, that's a tour of my house. I'm going to get back to my clay. Okay. So, I'm just going to be shaping these horns. I want to 
to get the height of the uh, extension here the same as uh, on the other one. There we go. And I'm sorry I'm not using two cameras today. I just quite honestly didn't feel like it. Now, let's observe how these are positioned on the uh, headdress. It looks like looks like the uh, the bottom of the horn, the flat wide area is aimed straight on the side of the uh, headdress and sewn onto the headdress so I think I'll try to do the same I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put it <coughs> I'm gonna have to take out some of these I'll refine those horns even more as time goes by. There we go. And I want to do the same thing on this side, but now I've got to <coughs> match the height and uh, the angle. Boy, it is just raining. Beautiful rain. Okay. I'm going to heat up the uh, peg a little bit before I go dropping it down in there. It'll just make it go in the clay a little easier and I won't be deforming uh, the, the horn at all. Okay. Gotta get the heights just right. There we go. Now his headdress is gonna have three feathers attached to the headdress itself, and then we got the long piece of uh, cloth, trade cloth, that's gonna come down and around and up. That's gonna have a bunch of feathers on that too. So that will be what I'll do next time. I'm happy the way this turned out, and uh, it will. It doesn't look like much right now, but it will be a lot better by the time I get done as I refine the horns and the headdress, and, the, and then I got to start making the feathers, which I'll probably do separately from the sculpting stand. I'll do it while I'm watching TV or something. And I'll show you what I mean by that when I get ready to do that. Because it's about 20 or 30 feathers that are going to be going on here, and I've got to make each feather individually. All right. Remember, I've got instructional DVDs on how to sculpt, taking advantage of uh, the over 50 years that I've been sculpting. And uh, with little tricks of the trade and little shortcuts for making things a little easier than what they look like to do. Alright, I've talked enough. Good night. By the way, this is the uh, sign of a crazy dog society, this uh, type of headdress. All right, later on. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.